to view ideally sunlight for two to 10 minutes every morning upon waking. So you get up in the morning, you go outside and you get some bright light in your eyes. Blue light has a fundamental role in setting the body's internal clock, a vital rhythm often referred to as the circadian rhythm. Our light viewing behavior has perhaps the strongest effect on our levels of alertness and our capacity to fall asleep and get a good night's sleep. And this is because at the fundamental layer of our biology, every cell in our body needs information about time of day. Mechanics behind this biological process are often intriguing and they underscore the intricate complexity of our physiological systems. What light does is it sets the foundation of our abilities and it does that indirectly and directly. The way that we function is by way of our nervous system. Our nervous system links all the organs of the brain and body. So we've got brain, spinal cord, but then of course, spleen, heart, lungs, etc. And the nervous system is the system that coordinates all of those. When we expose ourselves to blue light, particularly during the morning hours, we send a signal to our body that it's time to wake up, time to start the day. I always say, are you getting sunlight in your eyes within an hour of waking up. And people always think I mean you have to watch the sun rise across the horizon. I don't do that, but it's low. So the cells in your eye that, that send all these good signals during the day are looking for what's called low solar angle. This chain reaction begins with the activation of a specialized photoreceptive neuron in the eye or neurons in the eyes, which in response to the blue light, transmit signals to the hypothalamus a region in the brain that oversees various essential bodily functions. So they're looking for when the sun is low relative to the horizon, but it doesn't have to just be crossing the horizon. Usually they say no. And I said, do you see sunlight before you see your phone, before screen light? And usually they say no. And so I said, well, just try and get two to 10 minutes of sunlight. And they say, well, it's cloudy where I live. I don't live in sunny California like you do. This complex regulatory process includes control over sleep cycles, hormonal balances, immune system function, appetite, mood regulation. Thus, the whole of blue light goes beyond just promoting alertness. It orchestrates a significant portion of our physiological mechanisms, influencing our overall health, wellness, and daily performance. Getting sunlight in your eyes early in the day, even if it's through cloud cover, we mm -hmm. talk about how to do that. I would put right up there in the top batch of mental health, physical health, and performance enhancing behavioral tools. And it's completely zero cost. It takes a little bit of time. The impact of sunlight on sleep quality is a fascinating aspect of our biology that offers valuable insights into the way that our external environment interacts with our internal biological mechanisms. Sunlight, a natural and potent source of blue light, directly influences the regulation of our circadian rhythms. When you wake up in the morning, your brain and body have effectively been in the dark, regardless of uh, what sleep environment you happen to be sleeping in. And you have a set of neurons, nerve cells in the back of your eye, a little structure called the neural retina, it's a little three-layered structure. And those nerve cells are not involved in detecting the shapes of things. What they are essentially looking for, what activates them is bright light, ideally from sunlight. And when bright light, ideally from sunlight, reaches the eye, those particular neurons send a signal off into the vaulted dark of the brain. Uh, they do that by way of a little wire called an axon. Uh, and they communicate with an area of the brain that's vitally important called the hypothalamus. It sits right above the roof of your mouth and it harbors a bunch of structures that are responsible for hormones like testosterone and estrogen, for um, cortisol release um, in other locations in the body, basically controls when you're going to be alert, when you're going to be asleep, your hormones, your immune system function, and your appetite and your mood. So this morning signal of getting bright light in your eyes is absolutely vital. Our internal clock uses this light as a signal, indicating when it's time to start the day and be active, and when it's time to wind down and sleep. Therefore, by consciously and regularly exposing ourselves to sunlight, particularly in the morning, we can influence our sleep patterns leading to improved sleep quality and heightened alertness during waking hours. So the simple behavior that I do believe everybody should adopt, including many blind people, we can talk about why that is, is to view ideally sunlight for two to 10 minutes every morning upon waking. So when you get up in the morning, you really want to get bright light 
into your eyes because it does two things. First of all, it triggers the timed release of cortisol, a healthy level of cortisol into your system, which acts as a wake up signal and will promote wakefulness and the ability to focus throughout the day. It also starts a timer for the onset of melatonin, this sleepiness hormone or the hormone of darkness, as they say. Melatonin is inhibited by light. So by viewing light first thing in the day, you set in motion these two timers, one for wakefulness that starts immediately and one for sleepiness that starts later. The key thing here is that people are hearing a lot nowadays about avoiding blue light. Blue light is so terrible. Well, it turns out that blue light is exactly the wavelength of light that triggers activation of these cells. And that's exactly what you want early in the day. So people generally will say, well, maybe I should just look at my computer or my phone first thing in the day. Well, it turns out that these cells are very hard to activate early in the day and very easy to activate at night. So it's kind of like the biology is encouraging us, if you will, to take on the right behaviors, which are to get outside. Even if there's cloud cover, there's a lot more light energy, a lot more photons coming through cloud cover than you're going to get off your phone or a computer. And early in the day, two to 10 minutes outside without sunglasses is going to be really beneficial for a huge range of biological functions and brain state. Moreover, regular exposure to sunlight can help mitigate the symptoms of certain sleep disorders, such as insomnia and delayed sleep phase syndrome. This is especially relevant for people living in regions with sparse sunlight or those whose work schedules prevent them from getting adequate sunlight exposure. So the main way in which our body and nerve cells and liver cells and gut cells know what time of day it is, is by the rising and setting of the sun. And it's not consciously perceived. It's not like you say, oh, there's the sun. I see the sun there it's setting. There's actually in a subconscious way, there's a specific set of neurons in the eye called melanopsin ganglion cells. These are cells that were discovered by a guy at Brown University named David Burson. These cells perceive the particular, they, they are activated by the particular wavelengths of light created by low solar angle when the sun is low in the sky and when it's setting again, low in the sky. So rising and setting the low solar angle when it's directly overhead, high solar angle. So what's interesting about this is that these cells, when activated, send a nerve pulse to a set of neurons that sit right above the roof of your mouth called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Those cells secrete a bunch of things into your body and organize the timing of all the cellular processes, all the cellular processes in your body. Now, it's not like your liver cells need to be active at the same time as your heart cells. Your heart has to be active 24 24 hours around the clock. Mm -hmm. Your gut has to do its thing at a particular time. So think of your body kind of like a factory, and every portion of that factory needs to do different things at different times a day. So when the sun is low in the sky, you can look at it directly much more easily without pain. But if it's painful, it's okay to blink. Uh, Don't damage your eyes on account of trying to get the sunlight. Here's the idea. A little bit of background just to kind of nest this in something. Every cell in your body has a little 24 hour clock. Viewing the sun, in particular morning sunlight, on a consistent basis, I would say 80% or more of the days of your life is what you should strive for. So it could be 100%, could be 80, but try and do this daily. What it does is it aligns all of those clocks in a very precise way. And it does this by activating specific neurons in your eye called the intrinsically photosensitive melanopsin ganglion cells, but forget, that's all geek speak, connects to your brain and informs all the cells of your body what's going on in the outside world and aligns them. So imagine going into a clock store with every clock is an alarm clock and they're on different schedules. Mm -hmm. That's what happens if you don't view morning sunlight. When you do view morning sunlight for about, I would say five minutes to 10 minutes on a clear day, try and face in the direction of the sun. Don't do it through a window. Don't do it with sunglasses on. Find to wear eyeglasses or contacts, even with as UVB protection. Don't wear a brimmed hat. You know, just look in the general direction of the sun, even if you have to be on your phone, but just kind of get some sunlight in your eyes and blink if you need to, if it's painful. Look away from it a little bit if it's really bright. That morning sunlight coordinates all the cellular and organ systems of your body and does a couple of things. First of all, it boosts a number of chemicals that need to be released early in the day, such as cortisol, which is healthy if it's released early in the day, and the so-called catecholamines, which are dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. What is that? Oh, excuse me, dopamine, norepinephrine, and, and uh, epinephrine. What does that do? It gives you increased focus, energy, and alertness through the morning, increased immune system function throughout the day, focus throughout the day. And it sets a timer on some other clocks in the body 
including the one that releases melatonin about 16 hours later to make you sleepy and fall asleep easily. 